And sure enough, when they name a number, the card is at the number they named! And they are dealing the cards! It's nuts! Go back and watch the live performance. It's nuts! You will see some of the biggest magicians in the world, your David Blaine's of the world, doing this trick on television. In this episode of Dara's Magic School, you're going to learn how to control a spectator's thoughts. Yeah, you heard me right. They name any number. And sure enough, when they deal down that number of cards, they find the playing card that you predicted before the trick even began. It's an absolutely mind-blowing psychological illusion. If that interests you, stick around and we'll get into it right after this. Hello everybody and welcome to Dara's Magic School, the series that teaches you the tricks of the trade and reveals some of magic's most closely guarded secrets. I am your host Dara and I'm joined today by the one and only, she is the Donner, meat in my kebab. <laughs> And you know what? I'm going to cut it right there because what I've realized, Becky, is if I keep saying three of those every week, I'm going to run out pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> so from this episode forth, from this episode onwards, I shall only do one. So you're the Donner meat in my kebab. How do you feel about that? Pretty juicy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing better than a juicy kebab. Yeah. yeah, we're not vegetarians on this channel. Um, <laughs> Forgive me for those of you who might be offended by that. I, on that note, I have actually have a great deal of admiration and respect for vegetarians. That's in, uh, and vegans even more, even more so. That's an incredibly difficult thing to do. So hats off to you. And um, actually, on that note, Becky and I have uh, on more than one occasion, and I'm aware I'm off top topic right now, but we've given it some thought, haven't we, about the whole vegetarianism, vegan thing. If you are a viewer of ours. And you have some information about that. If you're a vegan or a vegetarian and you have a method uh, or a way of doing it that makes it easier for someone like me who really loves his food, please do get in touch. I, I honestly would love to hear hear from you. Uh, that aside... Uh, back to the magic. <laughs> back to the magic. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Becky, what I'm going to try and do today is manipulate your thoughts. I'm going to try and implant a thought in your head. And... Our conversation thus far has been so sporadic. We've talked about Donna Kebabs and vegetarianism, and now I'm talking about mind control. What you may not realize is that from the very moment I started speaking, I've been choosing my words in such a fashion as to manipulate what you're going to think of in a moment. Oh! Now that's a big claim. That is a big claim, but I'm gonna justify that claim by the time we get to the end of this performance. For this psychological experiment, we're going to use a deck of cards. And I want the audience, of course, to see that they're all different. And I want you, Becky, to take the deck and give it a mix. Yeah. Shuffle it to your heart's content. No problem at all. I don't even have to look, although it doesn't matter. I mean, it would be a pretty crazy example of mind control if I could control what order the deck was going to end up in. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. That would be insane, wouldn't it? Of course, that's not what I'm trying to do today, but I just want to, I want to verify, so I want to show the audience. It would be impossible for me to know what order these were going to end up in. You shuffled the cards. Did you feel like you were under any control or did it feel like somebody was in your head moving the gears and manipulating you? No. No, of course not. Becky, I want you to place out your hand like this, face up. So in a moment, I'm going to get you to you know, deal down cards, right? Um, just like this, you know, face down, one down on top of the other. Now, of course, if I deal them, you're going to accuse me of cheating. And if I tell you how many to deal, obviously that's not an example of psychological manipulation. That's literally me telling you what to do. Yeah. So what I'm going to get you to do is name a number. But before you name that number, Here's my claim. I, as I said at the start, have already begun implanting a thought in your head. That thought, and I probably shouldn't even say this much, but the thought I'm trying to implant is the number that you're going to name in a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay? Here's the thing. 
you're going to stop at the Nine of Hearts. You're going to stop at the Nine <laughs> of Hearts. There's not okay. an echo. There's not an echo in the room. Don't worry. Big claim, okay? Of course, what needs to happen next is you're going to name a number. There's only one kind of a uh, rule, shall we say? One condition about naming the number. We know there's 52 cards in a deck. If you name 48, we're going to be here till next week, counting down one, two, three, all the way down to 48. So all I'm going to ask is that you name a number between one and 20, mm -hmm. just so that our audience at home isn't sitting there for ages, and just so that we're not here breaking our ourselves uh, completely, counting down to number 48 or something. Bear in mind also, make sure that I don't do anything funny with the deck of cards once you've named the number, okay? What number are you going to go for? Remember, between 1 and 20. What do you want to go for? 14. 14. Remember, put your hand out face up. You're going to deal the cards. You do not deal them face up like this. If you deal them face up, um, first of all, they'd be coming from the bottom. That, that's not how this works. You're going to deal from the top like this, right? You deal them off. Now, you hold the cards. You name the number 14. And I don't know if you noticed, but I smirked a little bit when you did. What if I told you that the number 14 was the number I was implanting in your brain from the very beginning? Would you believe me? No. You wouldn't, would you? And none of you at home do either. But what if I've got proof? <laughs> what card did I say you were going to deal to? Nine. Of? Hearts. The Nine of Hearts? If that was the 14th card, that would be pretty intriguing evidence for the claim that I made, would it not? Yes. Becky, at your own pace, start counting those cards into my hand. Make sure you take them one at a time. That's mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that would technically be the fourteenth card, wouldn't it? Put out your other hand face up. Just hold on to that fourteenth card. If you had said stop or named another number and said stop at any one of those, are any of those the nine of hearts? No. If you had went one further, you'd have gotten the three of spades. One further again, you'd have gotten the Seven of Hearts, etc. In fact, if you had stopped at any other card in this deck, you would have stopped at a card that wasn't the Nine of Hearts. You named the number 14, you shuffled the cards, you dealt the cards. Turn that card over. <laughs> nine of Hearts. And you dealt to the Nine of Hearts. You didn't feel me in there? I won't say what I saw while I was in there. <laughs> um, that uh, might disturb our audience somewhat. We've been in there a lot lately. <laughs> not liking this. <laughs> what do you think, Becky? Cool? Yeah, it's deadly. You want to learn how it's done? Yeah. Believe it or not, like always, I say it every week. I say it every time. You won't believe... How simple this trick really is. You won't believe how simple this trick really is. Guys, if you want to learn this powerful yet simple and easy to perform illusion. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. Hello everybody and welcome to the explanation portion of how to control somebody's mind or how indeed to implant a thought. Needless to say, I didn't really implant a thought in your mind, Becky, but it really feels like that's what happened. Guys, this comes back to presentation. Um, you're used to this channel by now, I, I trust and I hope, but if you've ever seen me perform in the real world, you will notice that the cards are almost an afterthought. They're almost in the background. It's between me and the person. And I'm manipulating them, supposedly, and getting them to think something. And it all feels very psychological. And if you present it that way, people start to genuinely believe that you can manipulate their thoughts and make them think things that they felt they were thinking themselves, but that they were actually controlled to think by you because you're a master manipulator of minds. Obviously, the truth couldn't be further from that. It's 
Such a simple trick. And the only question you need to ask yourself if you want to perform this, can you add and subtract from 10? That's it. Becky, we started by having you shuffle the cards and we ended up with the nine of hearts on top. You didn't know that. I did. And I'm going to talk about how I got that information in a moment. Let's just assume you've already shuffled the deck. I would like, for the sake of continuity, for the card at the top to be the same card as the performance. Now, it could be any card. This isn't part of how it's done. If we shuffle the cards with the cards to a different place and the seven of clubs was at top, at the top, we could do the trick just as easily with the seven of clubs. But just for the sake of simplicity, I want it to be the nine of hearts because that's the card we all have in our minds anyway. So Becky has finished shuffling the cards. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Becky hands it back to me. And then I say to Becky, Becky, there's absolutely no way I could have known what order these were going to end up in, could I? I couldn't have known that. And now I know what the top card is. Mm. <laughs> it's that simple, right? So I'm justifying what I'm doing. I say, Becky, look. And I even start off by showing Becky. And then as I'm showing her, I turn. There's no way I could have known what order these were going to be in. I mean, you shuffled them, right? And I'm very casual and open. And all I'm doing as I say that, all I'm doing is remembering the top card. The top card is the Nine of Hearts. Okay. Now the question is, how did the Nine of Hearts get from being on the top to being at 14? And that's where the illusion really begins from the explanation perspective. Becky, I asked you to place out your hand and I said, in a moment, I'm going to get you to deal down some cards. And I dealt off one card. That's the Nine of Hearts. And then I continued to deal more cards. But after I dealt the Nine, I pushed off two. And see, what I'm about to do is get the Nine of Hearts in the 10th position. To do that, I have to deal off the Nine of Hearts as a single card. And then I deal off four sets of two. One, two, three, four. And then to get it in the 10th position, it's currently nine, I deal off one more single card. Now, I do all of that while I'm talking to Becky. So just to go back and start again, the Nine of Hearts is on the top. I'll just go into performance mode for a second. So Becky, in a moment, I'm going to get you to deal down some cards. Now, obviously, if I deal down the cards, you're going to accuse me of cheating, right? And obviously, I don't want you to accuse me of cheating. I want you to deal down the cards, and the cards will be completely out of my hands, and then there's no way, you know, I can manipulate anything. Now, I just put that card in the 10th position. Now, that's hard to do, and even there, I was kind of getting confused myself. Uh, but if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, the 9 of hearts is now the 10th card from the top, Okay. So again, just to be clear what we're doing, put out your hand. We deal out one single card, the nine of hearts, and then I go one, two, three, four, and then a single. And I put those back on top, right? And I do this in the act of supposedly explaining to Becky what she's going to do in a moment. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And of course, that is the nine of hearts there in the tenth position, okay? So why am I getting the nine of hearts into the tenth position? So let's just, for now, get it into the 10th position. So actually, Becky, just put out your hand again, if you don't mind. So I deal off, and, and in performance, I do it like a B. I do two and two, and then two and two. All right, so as I'm talking to you, I deal off the first card. I say, now, Becky, look, I'm going to get you to deal some cards in a moment. I'm just going to deal them off at the top of the deck to make sure, by the way, that I'm not cheating. If you're holding the cards, there's no way that I can cheat, right? Um, and so in addition to that, I'm going to get you to name a number. Now, my nine of hearts is in the 10th position. If I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. My nine of hearts is there in the 10th position. Right? I know that. Becky doesn't know that. Becky doesn't even know that I knew that the top card was a nine of hearts to begin with because I was so casual with how I, I glimpsed it, right? I now get Becky to name a number. If you remember from the live performance, Becky, I got you to name a number between one and 20. You named 14. How many cards would I have to add to the top here to make your card number 14. Four. Four cards. And if you go back and watch the live performance, what did I do? Becky, put out your hand. I said, now, Becky, you're not going to deal from the top. I don't, or from the bottom. I don't want you to deal the cards face up like this. That would be a mistake because then we can see what they are. And I want this to be completely in the blind. And then I put those on and I turned it over. And then again, hand out. I said, I want you instead to deal them face down like this. But remember, you're going to deal 14 cards. Because that's the number you named. How casual is that? Your card is now in the 14th position. Yeah. The trick is over. It's done. Now, what you might be thinking is, hang on a minute. It's not going to always be that simple, is it? Let's get rid of those four cards and put them on the bottom. Okay? 
Let's say Becky named 19. Now I'm going to deal in twos again. If we break the cards into pairs, 9 has 4 pairs plus 1. If you named 7, it will be 3 pairs plus 1. Because 6, um, 2, 2, 2, and then a 1 to make it 7. So name a, name a number between um, 11 and, and 20, Becky. 18. 18. Can I try this? So Becky, I don't want you to deal cards from the from the bottom because then we can see their faces and I want this to be done in the blind. So I want you to deal from the top instead like this. Does that make sense? Now notice what I just did there. I just counted off two, 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 and two while I was explaining to Becky. And then I put them on the bottom, otherwise known as the top. And now your card is in the 18th position. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And there's the nine of hearts. And that's the number that you just named randomly. Yeah. There is an extra wrinkle here. I know what you're thinking. Hang on a minute. What if they name a number between one and 10? Right? Yeah. Because now adding cards isn't going to cut it. Let's get our nine of hearts, Becky. Sorry now, I know your hand is probably getting tired. Are you okay? I know your hand is probably getting tired. Are you okay? Are you okay? Becky, I asked you to place out your hand. Put out your hand. We just put out your hand again, if you don't mind. Again, hand out. Put out your hand at this. Your hand is probably getting tired. Are you okay? Yeah, fine. Awesome. So let's get our nine of hearts into our 10th position. So I go two doubles, another two doubles, and a single. And now our nine of hearts is in the 10th position. Now let's imagine that you name, in fact, you name a number between 1 and 10. 5. 5. Okay, so Becky, put out your hand at this. In a moment, I'm going to get you to deal down some cards off the top of the deck. You can deal, you're going to deal down the number that you, that you called out. The question is, could I have known what number you were going to name? No. No. You see what I just did there? All I did this time, rather than turn it face up and say, now Becky, I don't want you to deal from the bottom. I, I just repeated my instruction, but this time from the top. Her nine of hearts is now one, two, three, four. It's in the fifth position. Because all I did, Becky, and you were smiling as I did it, because you knew what I was doing, because now you know how it's done. All I did, if your hand is out, I demonstrated what you were going to do from the top. I know that she named five. I know my nine is at position ten, so I need to get five cards out of the way to make her nine the fifth card. And so I dealt off a double, I dealt off a double, and I dealt off a single. That's all I did. And then I put those back at the bottom. And now her card is in the fifth position. And this is the same no matter what number they name. If they name 10, by the way, you're golden. You don't have to do anything. So if they name a number between 1 and 10, 10 you do nothing. Any other number, you just have to remove the number to make the maths work. So if they name number 4, um, so the 9 is going to be in the fourth position, that means we'd have to get rid of 6 cards. So I deal off three pairs. Now I know what you're wondering maybe, why am I dealing off in pairs? That is to disguise it even more. You see, if I deal off the exact number, now this nine is in the 10th position. Let's just double check it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So the nine is in the 10th position. If they name five, so the nine is going to be in the fifth position. And I, and I say, okay, so in a moment, I'm gonna get you to deal off. One, two, three, four, five. And then I put those to the bottom. And now it's in the fifth position. They might begin to work out, hang on a minute, maybe he just had a tenth from the top and he dealt off five cards to make it work. If you don't count these, and it's very important that you don't, when you're doing your demonstration deal, don't count them. Yeah. You say, so now in a moment, I'm going to get you to deal off some cards, some cards, and I deal off a double, I deal off a double, and I deal off a single because she said five. And I say, but you're going to deal them, not me. And you're going to deal to the number that you thought of, not a number I thought of. Does that make sense? And then, of course, one, two, three, four, five, and the nine of hearts is in the fifth position. So any number between one and ten, you have to remove some cards. If they name a number between eleven and twenty, you need to add a number of cards. And you know how I did that, because it happened in the live performance. Yeah. I just flipped face up. And however many cards I need to add, I deal them off in doubles and singles to make up the max. I say, and, and all in the action of saying, now I don't want you to deal from the bottom. Yeah. Right, remember that, Becky? So, Becky, do you think you could perform this? You think you could give it a go? 
I'll try. So forget the nine of hearts now ever existed. I'm going to shuffle the cards. And remember, you're going to try and get a glimpse at the top card. Now, what are you going to say while you do that? Go for it. <clears throat> Can you remember what to say when you're looking at the cards? Yeah. So oh. you shuffled the deck. So I did. no way I could know what card this is. What Wh card what? you pick. What order? Oh, what order they'll be in. Yes. That's okay. true. That's totally fair. So I shuffled it. Yeah, because I shuffled it. Because you shuffled it. Exactly. Now, Becky, I'm going to walk you through this. Don't panic. What position, you've now just remembered a card, correct? Yeah. What position do we need to get that card into? Ten. Ten. How are you going to do that? So if you just place out your hand for me. Yep. I'm just going to show you what you'll be doing in a few minutes. Wonderful. That's really good, Becky. So what you'll be doing is just placing them. No. No, no, no. Now, now, the first one is good. You deal off a single first, but then yeah. what do we deal off? How many pairs? Two? Three? Four. And then how many more? One. One single. Beautiful, Becky. You, <laughs> guys, this is so important. I've never shown this to Becky ever. That's the first time you ever did that, and you just did those double pushovers like they were nothing. <laughs> you pushed off a single card, which is the card you've remembered. I don't even know what that is yet. Then she pushed off four doubles and then one more single, which puts the card she remembered in what position? The bottom. The bottom. Number so, 10. Number 10. So now you've done your demonstration. So what do you do next? Okay, so I'm just going to pop them back. So you don't need to actually say yeah, that. Okay. So th the problem here is, and to be fair to you, Becky, the problem is I'm interrupting you. So if you were dealing these off now, you would have said, now I'm just going to demonstrate what you're going to do in a moment. You're going to deal off some cards yeah. just like that. Does that make, and now what you might say is, does that make sense as you're taking them back and putting them on the top? So yeah. ask me. Does that make sense? It sure does. Yeah. Bingo. Perfect. So I want you to name a number between uh, one and 20, just because there's 52 cards in the deck and we'll be here all night if you go 48. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. So I love that you remember that because I don't think I explained that in the explanation a moment ago, but that is my justification. Yeah. Right. Obviously... If they named 48, the amount of cards I would have to add to the 10 would be just insane, right? I'd have to add 38 cards, which would just be nuts, right? Now, we don't want to have to do that. So we justify limiting the options with reference to how long it would take if we go for the whole deck. And you just did that wonderfully, Becky. <laughs> so I'm going to name a number between 1 and 20. Now, for the sake of your performance, Becky, we're going to do this twice. Okay. Firstly, I'm going to name an, a number from one side which requires one set of actions then i'm going to name a number from the other side which requires a different set of actions so the number i'm going to name right now is 16. yeah perfect okay i named 16. so <clears throat> i just want to show you what you'll be doing again in a moment you'll be just um what? So, sorry, I yeah, know you saw what I was going to say. So, <laughs> I just want to give you one recommendation. Don't say I'm going to show you what you're going to do again. Okay. What you say right now is, and if you remember from the live performance, now be very careful that you don't deal from the bottom of the deck. Oh, yeah. So, what I don't want you to do is deal like this from the bottom because we can see all the cards. Now, don't worry, Becky, if you can't speak while you're trying to keep counting the numbers. If you find you can't keep counting the numbers while speaking, just feel free to deal silently. This is what will come with practice. Even I find it difficult to keep track of the number in my head as well as the deal that I'm doing. Now remember, I named 17. So before we go any further... 16. Sorry, I named 16. Good grief, my name. <laughs> How many pairs are you going to have to deal? Two pairs. Two pairs? That would only get you how many cards? Four. Yeah, but and Then I, I do one single and one single. Or you could just do three what? Oh, I could do three pairs. Yes. I love that this came up. Oh, yeah. You only need to do singles on the odd numbers. Yeah. On the even numbers, you can just do pairs all the way to the end. Yeah, that makes sense. Does that make... Oh, wonderful. I'm so happy that happened. <laughs> See, this is what's wonderful, Becky, about this format, where you're now learning the trick, because I realised things that I didn't clarify. Just because I perform magic doesn't mean that I'm the best teacher in the world, and I'm trying my best, and I think we're doing a pretty good job, but every single time that you tried to perform it, I realized that there's things that I didn't clarify, so I'm so happy that happened. Yeah. You only need to deal sing a single when it's an odd number, okay. but for now, I name 16, so you're now going to show me how I'm not supposed to deal. So where don't I deal from, So Becky? I don't want you to deal from the bottom of the deck, so okay. I don't want you Oh, no, no, that's a single. I don't want you to do this. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> um, they all got stuck together, I think. Just start again. You're meant to de deal off three pairs. That's all you're going to do. 
beautiful. So yeah, think because you're talking. Yeah. yeah Becky, this is <laughs> this is totally fair. It would be incredibly un- No 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 No, you're okay. No, I re- I don't want you to feel bad. Guys, <laughs> this is such a teachable moment. Becky just made a totally honest mistake and pushed off too many cards for the third pair because she was talking and trying to do it all at once. But you can't do it all perfectly on your first go. If you did, frankly, this should be called Becky's Magic School. You know, it's okay to make mistakes. And you just made that mistake, but now you just corrected it. You dealt silently. So now where do you put those cards? Excellent, excellent. And now what happens next? Now, so I just want you to deal one by one, but make sure it's face down so yep. that we don't see the cards as they come out. Like you just explained. Yeah, so if you just deal. So you, you can hand me the deck. Oh, I can hand you yep. the deck. And just take one out. And then you put out your up hand. to number 16. Like yeah, that was the number I named and I shuffled the cards. Yeah. And you just showed me how not to deal. So if I, I, oh, by the way, there's a thing we missed here, right? You haven't told me what thought you implanted in my head. So oh. what, what am I, what, what am I supposed to be dealing to? So I implanted the Joker into your head. Wow. Okay. Well, you, you not only implanted the Joker, but you implanted the number 16. Oh, is that what I meant to say? Yes. You implanted the number 16 in my head because that's where you put the Joker. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to do this a second time, but a number between one and ten. So don't worry, you get you get a second attempt. So now I'm going to deal down sixteen cards like you instructed me to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And... Oh, sorry. Forgive me. Forgive uh -huh. me. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. My fault. So to stop right there. Yes. This is the card six. that I implanted into your head. The number. The number I planted into your head. Number 16. Number 16. And it was the Joker that I put there. So if you want to turn it over and have a look. Yep. <laughs> and sure enough, I dealt exactly to the Joker. Becky, that was a marvellous first attempt. Marvellous first attempt. Now, we're going to do this one more time. We're going to go more quickly this time. And you'll find this is easier. When they name a number between 1 and 10, it's a little bit easier. Now, you're always going to give them the option between 1 and 20. The only reason I'm performing, getting Becky to perform this twice is because the mechanics of how the trick works are different depending on whether they name a number between 1 and 10 or 11 and 20, right? Obviously, between 11 and 20, you got to flip face up. you got to deal a few cards off to get it deeper in the deck. For 1 to 10, you're dealing off a couple of cards and getting rid of them to make the maths work. Okay, so Becky, I've shuffled the cards. You're going to go from scratch. Speak to me. What are you not supposed to know? So I'm not supposed to know the order of this deck. Is that right? Yeah. How? Why? Uh, because you have shuffled the deck. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm just going to show you how I want you to um, deal out a few cards. Perfect. At the okay. So if yep. you just put your hand out for a second. Okay. So it's just as simple as that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So and I'm dealing them face down into a pile. Yeah. Excellent. And I'm just going to take those cards. You don't need to say that. Okay. You don't need to yeah, say I that. Yeah, I don't need to do that. You say you, you just so explained it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that make sense? Perfect. Put the deck back together. Yeah. You're perfect. done. Done. Now here's where you, this is what we missed the first time. Here's where you're going to tell me um, what card I'm going to stop at, no matter what number I name. Yeah. Okay. So go for it. You're going to stop at the three of spades. Three of spades? Yeah. If you, if, if you forgot it, don't worry about it. We know what's a there's three. There's so much going on. I know. There's a lot to remember. Don't <laughs> panic. So I, it, three of spades hearts. doesn't matter what it is, but I'm going to stop at the three, right? So yeah. obviously with practice, you will remember the card more cleanly, right? <laughs> in, in the actual edit, I'll make sure and put what the card was, which I don't know now. I'll put what the card was on the screen so the audience know what card yeah. I'm supposedly going to stop at. So right. I want you to pick a number between one and 20. Excellent. And, and the number that you pick is the number that where you will land on my card that I've chosen. Because you're doing what? Because I am getting into your mind. And implanting and what? And implanting the number. Well done. You got it. Mind. You got it. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, so, so I name a number now, right? Yeah, between one and ten, please. Okay, and always make sure that you keep the cards in a in a position and tell them and look guys, make sure you watch the deck to make sure I'm not gonna do any funny yeah. business after you've named the number. Right? So I'm gonna name a number. I'm gonna go for the number I'm gonna be cheeky. I'm gonna go 
for the number four. What position is the three in in the day? Ten. It's in the tenth position. Yeah. Yeah. I named four. Yeah. So it needs to be at the fourth position. Yes. So okay, how many so... cards will we have to... If it's ten down, how many cards do we need to remove from the top six. to get it into the fourth position? It's six. How many pairs is that? Three. Three pairs. Exactly. So now you're going to remind me, remember, this is how you deal okay. from the top. Remember, this is how you deal from the top. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And now where do you put those? Excellent. On the bottom. Yeah. Now you don't need to tell them that. Remember, you're no. just, remember yeah. this, and it, it will be this casual, right? So I'm going to take those six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just going to put them back in the top just to give you a sense. So put out your hand. Now remember, you're going to deal down like this from the top. And they're going to be in your hands, not in mine. I want you to hold the deck. I want it to be completely fair. You yeah. see how casual that is? The difference is, though, Becky, I've been performing magic for decades. You haven't been. And you've just learned how to do this technique today. I think once you know the trick, then to learn your, what you're saying, doing the trick, that's exactly. what's confusing me. Exactly right. It's like, exactly what right. do I say next? Then, Precisely. That comes with time. Also. It does. And, and this is where the practice comes in, guys. Practice makes perfect. Don't and ever I'll, forget it. Okay, so... So now you hand me the cards, right? Yeah, I hand you the cards. So I just yep. want you to do exactly what I done a moment ago, how to place them down, but only obviously the four cards that you said. Yep. Because um, that's the number you chose. Yeah, but the number that you supposedly... Yeah, but I, I supposedly in, entered it into your head. Into your head. And Becky, if and when you perform this for people, be super confident about that. Yeah. You've seen me do this type of magic for people. I tell them, I said... No, trust me, you don't have a choice here. Yeah. You, so you're the audience member. You don't have a choice. I've put that number in your head. I'm sorry. I, I I know it feels bizarre for me to say so, but I put that number in your head. You never had a choice. Go for it. Deal down. Four cards. Go for it. The, the cards that I named, the three, whatever it was, Becky, it's in the fourth position. It's there. You name the number, it's there. You know, be bold, be confident, yeah. right? Have the conviction, have conviction, right? So put out your hand, Becky, and I deal down. One, two, three, four. And then sure enough, the three of hearts is in the fourth position. This is probably the most difficult effect that I've taught on the channel yeah. thus far. I'm sure you felt that today. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> this is definitely the most difficult effect, but you know- But it's one, if you get it done, it's really amazing. This is the point, right? Yeah. For that difficulty, you're getting an incredible miracle. Yeah. A powerful piece of magic where you implant a thought in a spectator's mind. And sure enough, when they name a number, the card is at the number they named. And they're dealing the cards. It's nuts. Go back and watch the live performance. It's nuts. You will see some of the biggest magicians in the world, your David Blaine's of the world, doing this trick on television. Now, they might not be using the exact same method, but they're doing a very similar illusion in terms of the spectator's perspective. So guys, it's it's not the easiest trick I've ever taught in the channel. And I think Becky can testify to that. But Becky, I promise you, and I promise you guys at home, if you practice this, you've got a wonderful little miracle in your pocket. I swear. That is the end of the show for today, guys. If you enjoyed the show, please do consider dropping a like. On the video you've no idea how much that helps us out and of course if you really are enjoying the content thus far do consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon that way you can stay up to date with all things magic school magic moments magic dara magic becky <laughs> and uh, yeah we will really look forward to seeing you in the next episode becky i'm going to give you the final word <laughs> anything to add i'm drained <laughs> I'm not coming back. <laughs> this really did feel like school today because you, you, you were doing maths. <laughs> I know. What the hell? I haven't done maths in years. Oh, good grief. Good grief. Wow. I love no, it. It was very good. I enjoyed so, it. So, Becky is drained. I'm going to go away and practice that now. I do. But Becky is drained, so I think it's time for her to get uh, a rest. Yes. And uh, if I'm being honest, I'm, time. <laughs> I, I'm pretty drained myself because it was exhausting <laughs> teaching you. <laughs> <laughs> we got there in the end. Guys, thank you very much for watching this week's episode of Dara's Magic School. From Becky and I, we wish you the best and we hope to see you in the next one. All the best. Bye. Bye.